LinkedIn is one that comes to mind. It's, it's amazing. You look at who the person's connections are, what companies he interacts with, who has vouched for him, who has recommended him. Twitter is the same way. You, you can see what the person's social network is, and you can craft the message to appear like it comes from the companies and people that he knows, and that it carries the content. And how do we tell our users, don't open attachments from people you don't know? It's not a very useful advice anymore because the messages that come to them are from people that they're likely to know. So in practical, we've got to figure out something better to tell our users. Another way in which the, the message can seem very personally relevant is if it's associated with some um, legitimate company. So attackers oftentimes lend an element of credibility to their messaging by associating themselves with um, with some, some legitimate way of interacting with people. So here's one example that I saw. In, um, this was published by Symantec. This was one of the many fake antivirus sites that you come across nowadays. And people are starting to get a bit cautious of downloading this antivirus tool that I've never heard of. So you know what? Let me click a button to chat with them. So this was a site distributing fake antivirus tools. But they actually allowed their victims to chat with a real person about the problems that they're experiencing. And that really legitimized this transaction and it also made it very personally relevant because if you read the transcript of the chat session this is the attacker behind the scenes interacting with the victim and actually trying to solve their specific problem and what is his problem his computer is probably infected or at least so they've been told and so here's this person interacting with the person who's a likely victim and making sure that he feels the love, he feels the attention of this company. And now the victim's guard is low because he wouldn't think that the attackers would invest into real world customer service like this. They've got to be a legitimate company. And so he does install their software, which turns out to be fake. So that was very interesting. And in this case, their chat was on an online chat. And I actually have not seen situations where the customer support from a fake company would be voice-based. But nowadays, it's not very expensive to do either. So those were examples of making the message personally relevant. And that is a way of lowering our guard. Another set of attacks that I have seen I grouped under the context of social compliance. And by this, I mean people have a natural tendency, I think, to do what other people around them do. And if, if, if you're in a theater and somebody, there's silence at the end of the performance, and then somebody starts to clap, everybody else starts to clap as well. And we don't do so, so without even thinking too much about it, because we do what people around us do. That's how we get along with people. We try to fit in. So let's look at some examples where this principle of social compliance has played a role. One situation is where malicious software was faking a review of a legitimate site. So you could place this in several different categories because this is a way of legitimizing this fake antivirus tool. But I think of this as social compliance because an attacker, so here's what happened. The victim got infected with something. And that malicious software modified the victim's host's file to redirect the common computer review sites so that whenever you go, in this case, to PC Magazine's website, instead you would arrive at the attacker's website. Why would you go there? Because this malicious software that you installed is telling you that you need to install this program that's going to solve all of your problems. The program is called Antivirus 2010, and it's really good. But you've never heard of it. So what do you do? You browse to PC Magazine's website, and guess what? You find a review on it that says that this is a fantastic product. And in fact, reader rating is very high, five out of fives. And you think to yourself, well, how bad can it be? I mean, other people found it useful. This legitimate website is reviewing it. But of course, what you don't realize is that malware has redirected your connection, and you're interacting with the attacker's website looking at a fake product review. So an element of social engineering that's more likely to have this victim pay money to buy this fake antivirus tool. Here's another example. And again, we've been hearing about social networking all the time. And that's because social networking, I think, is a, is a platform that's going to thrive from our tendency to be so socially compliant. And this is an example of the Kube face worm, but there are many others like it. And uh, whether you use LinkedIn or Facebook or Twitter, 
what a lot of people do is when they see something that they like, they share it with others. And when others see something that others like, they want to share it with others. Because we, we are social human beings. We want to, that's one of the many ways in which we fit into society by sharing things that we like with each other. So what happened here? Well, in this case, the worm infected the victim's system, stole his session cookies to authenticate to Facebook and Twitter, and posted as the victim onto the social networking platforms. And the postings were links to sites that were distributing this worm. And people following this guy on Facebook or on Twitter, they presumably were curious in what their friend recommends. If their friend recommends it, they're probably going to like it as well. And they clicked on those links. And those links said, hey, there's this amazing video. You've got to check it out. Well, if my friend likes the video, I'm probably going to like it as well. So I'm going to click. And when I click, I probably need to install a video player. So that's coupe face. Uh, here's another, another example, and this was an example uh, that I thought uh, the first time I saw cook jacking in the, in the real world. This was distributed on Facebook, and if you were infected with this particular malware, it would use your Facebook account to share with your friends links to this fantastic site. Uh, they were called, the site was want to see something hot. And if you went to that side, this is the image that you saw, except that I cropped it a little bit because there was more exciting thing happening on this end of the slide. Uh, but the thing is, if you want it to see more, you got to click the button. And of course, people, whenever presented with a red button, people are always going to click on it. That's just in our human nature, especially if it's nice and juicy like this. But what you didn't realize is that actually there was an invisible iframe hovering over this button. And when you thought you were clicking on the button, you were actually clicking on a link to share the URL to the site. And so there was this, this, yes, there was a social engineering aspect to this attack because it relied on the victims seeing an interesting site in the stream of their friends and wanting to see what their friends saw. But also there was this interesting technological aspect of how they implemented this quick jacking by this invisible floating iframe. Here's another example of uh, social engineering using the principle of social compliance. And this is a variant of the Nugachi worm. And this particular worm, the way it tried to social engineer people into downloading its executable was to manipulate counters of several sites that were uh, distributing software, legitimate sites. Uh, I don't actually know which specific sites they were targeting, but sites like, I don't know, download.com. You know, there are plenty of people who just like installing software. And what these people do, and some, uh, a long time ago I was one of those people, but I have since then gave up that, that uh, addiction. But with a lot of those people, would do is they would go to one of these sites and they would see, hey, what are people downloading nowadays? What's popular? I, wanna, I like playing with software. I want to see what's hot nowadays. And you know what? AVG, I haven't played with it. Maybe I'm going to download it because it's very popular. So what the Nugachi worm did is it actually up, a copy of the worm was uploaded to one of these file sharing sites. And then the worm kept hitting the download to artificially inflate the counter so that the popularity of this malicious fly, uh, file would float to the top. And so it would appear on, on the top as one of the most popular downloads. And you know what? If other people like it and download it, I want to see what they're downloading. And I'm probably going to download it as well. And so people who did that got infected. I think this is a, an element of social compliance, because we want to see what other people around us are seeing, who want to experience what other people around us are experiencing. And then another, another way in which um, this principle of social compliance comes into play is where uh, attackers make themselves look very legitimate. Because if we see people who look like what the professionals are supposed to look, then we're more likely to trust them. And in this case, this was a scam that tried to recruit money mules so that there are people who say that who are, are victimized into really laundering money for others. But these people think that they're working for a legitimate company. Why do they think so? Because they come across a site like this that looks very legitimate. It looks like 
seem to advertise some express service, who knows what they do, but if you read it, it starts making sense. And if you are looking for a job and you want to make a quick buck and you have been unemployed for a few months, well, maybe you're going to interact with this website and you're going to send them your resume and guess what? Yeah, sure, you're going to qualify because you've got their, um, their prerequisites of being willing to uh, engage in, in certain activities. But a lot of these victims, they're really social engineered into doing this, many of them, I think, because the sites with 